What's up guys? Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to kick off a series talking about different applications for geometry nodes from our architectural style models. So I'm interested in how we can use geometry nodes to create procedural architectural things in Blender. In this first video, we're going to use geometry nodes to create a simple stair. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, we're gonna focus on how we can use a repeating object in order to create a stair. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over into the geometry nodes tab. I'm currently using Blender 3.1. So if this looks a little bit different, you might be in a different version. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by doing a shift A and I wanna add a cube. The only reason I'm adding a cube is because I want an object in here that I can apply geometry nodes to. So we're just going to go into our modifiers and we're just gonna add a geometry nodes modifier to this object. So notice how when we do that, nothing happens to begin with. And so the first thing I'm gonna do for right now is I'm actually going to disconnect this node. So I'm gonna drag this off of here, right here. And what we want this to do is we want to create our own cube inside of our geometry nodes. So we're gonna do a shift A and we're just gonna go, go into our mesh primitives and we're gonna add a cube right here. Now if I drag this out, in the geometry, that's going to create a cube, which is really what we had before. But now this cube is being controlled by the inputs that are right here. And I know this is gonna drive some of you crazy, but I'm gonna go in and I'm going to change my units to Imperial, just cause those are the units that I understand. You can totally do this in metric. But what we wanna do is we wanna use this mesh to be our stair tread riser, right? So what we want is we want something that's going to be maybe like a foot deep. Um, we want it to be maybe a, um, maybe like three or four inches tall. So maybe like 0.33, something like that. And then we want it to have a certain width associated with it. So in this case, we're gonna say that it's four feet wide. So notice how this is basically the size of a stair tread right here. But the problem with this is we want this to be procedural, meaning we want you to be able to control that through our geometry node attributes right here. So what we're gonna do is instead of using the cube like this, we're gonna create some inputs. And so remember that what we need to do is we need to have an X, Y, and Z input right here, right? And so we need to have three inputs over here, but we also need a node to put these into. And so I'm gonna start by doing a shift A and adding a combine X, Y, Z node. What that's going to do is that's going to combine three different values into a vector that this can read. So that's going to allow us to dictate each one of these inputs using this node. However, what I want to do now is I want to drag an input off of my group input, right? So what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow me to set an input over here that you can see inside of the geometry nodes. And for now, I'm just gonna type a value of one in here just so you can see this. But notice what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to set our stair tread depth. So what we can do is we can tap the N key down in geometry nodes and look at our inputs right here. And so what we can do is we can click on this input and we can rename it. So in this case, right, this is going to be stair tread depth. Well, now we need to add two more, right? We need to add a stair tread width and a stair tread thickness. And notice how you can adjust these using the modifier over here. So these are actually adjustable inside of your actual model itself. So what that allows us to do is that allows us to control the thickness using the inputs in the geometry nodes modifier. So now what I want is I want my stair tread width to be four feet. I want my stair tread depth to be one foot or 12 inches. And I want my stair tread thickness to have a value of 0.33 right here. So that's gonna be my first tread. And so this is all well and good, right? But what we need to do is we need to repeat this multiple different times in order to have it be a stair because right now it's just a singular object. And so the way that we wanna do this is we're basically going to take our tread and we're going to create copies of it along a series of points. And so in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by adding a curve line note. So I'm just gonna do a shift A and add curve line right here. And so basically what we want to do is we want to use this to create a line that has a start and end point that we dictate. So the way that we're going to do that 
is we've got our curve right now, right? And if we were to drag this into our group input, you can see this. Well, notice how it just draws a line between one point and another point. And if you just if you adjust this, what this is going to do is it's going to move the line in that direction, right? And so what we need to do is we need to set this line up so that it moves in the direction of our rise and our run of our stair. And so what we want to do is we want to use math to figure out what direction this needs to go, right? And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to start by using a multiply add node. And so we're just going to do a shift A and we're going to add a math node right here. And we're going to change this from add to multiply add right here. And so what we want to do is we want to take, so we want to take the depth of our stair and plug it into our value but we need another input telling us how many stairs we're actually going to have, right? So if I drag this option into my multiplier right here, what I can do is I can change this to be number of stairs. So that's gonna be a value that we can adjust right here. And so I don't want this to be a float, I want this to be an integer, because I only want this to be a fixed number right here, I don't want it to have decimal values, but now, we're just going to take that value and remember that this is an x, y, z. So we're going to need a combine x, y, z node. So we're just going to duplicate this one right here. And we're just going to plug this value into the x value right here. And we're going to plug this vector into our end. Well, notice how when we do that, what that's going to do is that's going to move this way over. And so the reason it's way over is because we have our number of stairs set at eight. I just want this to be set at two. Right, so this is moving us over and up at the moment, but we also needed to calculate the height that we want in here, right? So we're gonna add another multiply add node right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this add end at zero for now. Um, that's just in there in case we need to adjust this in a second. But for the second one, we wanna take our stair tread thickness into the value, and we want to take the number of stairs and the multiplier, and then we're going to plug that into our Z value. That gives us the up and down right here. And so notice what this is doing is this is just adjusting this curve line. Well, now what we want to do is we want to take this curve line and we want to basically place instances of our step on each point in this line. So. The way that we do that is we do a shift A and we want to add an instances on points node right here. And so we want to drag our curve line into the points and we want to drag our mesh into the instance right here. So notice what that's doing is that's creating our step. We want to set our Y value to zero like this, but notice how we have a problem, which is if we turn our number of stairs up, it's just moving this along the line, right? It's just adjusting the length of the line that's being created. And so what we want to do is for our curve line, instead of having the curve drag directly into the points, we want to do a shift A and we want to add a resample curve node right here. So notice how when I have a resample curve node in here, so this is now setting this up so that it's splitting along a certain number of points right here. So notice how the more of these we have in here, the more um, the more steps that we get, the more instances that we get. And so remember that we have an input, whoops, over here for our number of stairs. So I'm gonna drag my number of stairs into my count. So now if I adjust this, notice how it's adding stairs in here based on this value. So we can use this in order to set our number of stairs on our points like this. But I wanna add one more thing. I wanna add something where I can actually dictate the rise between the stairs. Because right now this is fixed, right? We just, we're having it rise by our stair tread thickness. If I adjust my thickness up, the rise is going to adjust up with that. And that's not necessarily what I want. I wanna be able to dictate how far up each one of these goes for each step. And so to do that, what I wanna do is I'm gonna drag a new input into my value right here. So we're basically going to replace our stair tread thickness of our value with a new value that we dictate. So that value is going to get named rise per step. And so what that value is going to do is that's going to allow us to dictate how much up and down there is between each step inside of our model. So now I can say, okay, I want five stairs 
And for each stair, I want the rise to be, call it 0.75, or we'll call it 0.5 right here. So I can set my number of stairs. I can set the thickness of my treads, as well as the depth of my treads and the width of my treads using this setup. And so just one note, we do a lot of putting instances on points with geometry nodes. So we do a lot of math to figure out what point should be and then also what those instances should be. So that's something we should get fairly familiar with as we're moving forward with this. But now if I jump back into my layout mode right here, I've got this set of stairs that I can move around, I can rotate, I can kind of do whatever I want, and then I can adjust the depth, the width, and the thickness inside of Blender. All right, so I'm just kind of kicking off this series. I'm planning on talking about more applications for geometry nodes for actual architectural modeling. So I'm actually gonna make the files available for download so you can download them and check them out at the cgessentials.com slash geometry nodes. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. I will link to some other tutorials on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.